Let's read together Acts 3, 19. Repent then and turn to God so that your sins may be wiped out, that times of refreshing may come from the Lord. And so, friends, this is our theme for the year, times of refreshing. And yet, the emphasis here is on repentance because that is the beginning of a time of refreshing. He said that repent then, the times of refreshing might come. So without repentance, there will be no times of refreshing. And so we are, uh, we are so blessed, friends, last year, 2015, because we had uh, the theme for the year, which is uh, transformation. Repentance is transformation. Repentance is being transformed in the mind and in the will for a purpose, that we may be sorry for what we have done. And yet this being sorrow, friends, is not the worldly sorrow, but according to the apostle uh, Paul in 2 Corinthians chapter 7, verse 10, we are told that this godly sorrow brings forth repentance that leads to salvation. So this is the kind of sorrow that God demands from us. It's a godly sorrow. It's not a worldly sorrow. Meaning, when you are sorry for your sin, you recognize the source of the sin, and you recognize that only God can give you the forgiveness. And so we are told that repent then. But friends, he was talking about things that happened. This is Apostle Peter preaching to the people. He was reminding them that you sent Jesus Christ to the cross. He said that, you know, uh, in, verse, uh, in verse 15, you killed the author of life, but God raised him from the dead. We are witnesses of, of this. By faith in the name of Jesus, this man whom you see and know was made strong. It is in Jesus' name and the faith that comes through him that has given this complete healing to him as you can all see. So he was referring to a miracle that just happened. Because a man that was born lame was healed in the name of Jesus. And he reminded them that, you know what? It is Jesus that you crucified that brought healing. And friends, to us today, we might say that it was the Jews then that sent Jesus to the cross. But why did Jesus go to the cross? Why did Jesus go to the cross? Jesus went to the cross because of our sins. It is our sins. So he said that, you know, if you want to have a time of refreshing, then you repent because he said, now brothers, I know that you acted in ignorance. The reason why we sin many times is because we are acting in ignorance. We just don't know the consequence of our sins, of our actions. We thought that we are doing right. But, and we are very sincere in doing these things. But remember, friends, that there are many people that are sincerely wrong. They don't know that they are doing what was contrary to Scripture. And so he was reminding them that, you know, you acted in ignorance... Then, come then and repent that times of refreshing might come. What kind of refreshing is this? He was referring to a healing of a blind, of, of a lame man. He said that, you know, you, you could be in that situation in life. You could be suffering for years and years, even from birth. And the, the load is so heavy that you need to be set free. You need to be refreshed from all this. So he said that, you know, it starts with repentance. It starts with you acknowledging Jesus Christ as Lord, that you cannot do it your way. You could live the rest of your life in your own effort, but you will never be set free from what burdens you. So friends, what burdens us today? There is just one cure to the burden that we have. And that is the Lord Jesus Christ. He will come and set us free 
and give us a time of refreshing. Imagine, friends, you are thirsty in a dry land. It's so hot, and you are just, you know, you are just perspiring and wanted to be refreshed, and comes the water, pail of water. What would you do? Friends, you just take everything that you could and be refreshed. And that's what Jesus was actually say, saying in John chapter 7, verse 37. He said that, you know, if you are thirsty, then come. He said that if anyone is thirsty, let him come to me and drink. Whoever believes in me, as the scripture has said, streams of living water will flow from within him. So he was saying here that, you know, if you are thirsty, come to me. Because I am, he, in, in, in fact, he was saying that I am the one that will satisfy you. It's me that will refresh you. And it's true, friends, it's true that it's Jesus that would come to refresh us. Because again, in Matthew 11, he was saying that, Come unto me, you who are weary and are heavy laden, and I give you rest. How can Jesus give us rest? Then he explained it. My yoke is easy and my burden is light that you may have rest to your soul. Friends, many times, uh, we can, physically, we can handle the, the, the burden. A lot of us, we can handle the burden physically. A lot of laborers there, you, you know, you see them work, it's hard labor. They lift heavy loads. To you yourself, you know, you, you will be able to do that. But they do it day in, day in and day out. That is their job. Physically, they can handle it. It's a heavy load. But let me tell you, friends, how about a spiritual load? How about an emotional load? Not many can handle. A lot of people fail because of those burdens that come. Because this soul, friends, if this soul is burdened, who can handle it? Who can release us from the burden of our soul? But Jesus Christ himself. That's why he said, you come to me. You are heavily laden. Come to me and I will give you rest to your soul. And it is the burden of the soul, friends, that won't allow us to sleep well at night. It is the burden of the soul that won't allow us to have a good relationship with one another. It is the burden of the soul that will cause us load even in our bodies so that we get sick. But he said that, you know, you come that I may refresh you. Amen. So when he comes, friends, he will refresh us in our soul. He will, he will come and refresh us in our body the way that he refreshed this lame man. He was lame since birth. And yet he was set free. And so in the name of Jesus, we can be set free from all these burdens. And so I pray, friends, that we will continue to walk in faithfulness, knowing that only Christ Jesus, the author of life, that can give us the rest that we are looking for. And this is a repeat of what he was preaching earlier after the day of Pentecost. Because when the people were also amazed at the works of the Holy Spirit in the, in the disciples, he also preached. And the message, verse 38 of chapter 2, Acts, he said, Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus, for the forgiveness of your sins, and you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. So again, repentance. Friends, this is a good way to start the year. Repentance. Because that is the key to us getting what we want. In fact, when Jesus came, the first message that he delivered is a message of repentance. See, John the Baptist came before him, and John the Baptist preached the message of repentance. Repent for the kingdom of God is at hand. And he went around preaching repentance. And people came and they were baptized. 
And so when John the Baptist was locked up, he could no longer do the preaching of repentance. Then came Jesus, and he started with the same message, repent, for the kingdom of God is at hand. So friends, this is one sure way of us getting that refreshing spirit. Friends, Jesus Christ is the one that will lead us into the good and perfect life that we desire. In Psalm 23, see, just, just, just imagine, just imagine Psalm 23. And here you are, here you are, heavily laden. Here you are, weary, thirsty. And yet, here comes the Good Shepherd. And imagine yourself, friends, being led by the Good Shepherd. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not be in want. What do you need? He said that I shall not be in want. If he is the shepherd of my life, if he is the shepherd of my soul, I shall not be in want, meaning everything that you need, he will provide. He makes me lie down in green pastures. Friends, that's one of the load that we have. Provisions. The food that we need to survive every day. One of the loads. Why? Why do we have a load as far as the provision, the daily bread is concerned? It's because of sin. It's because of sin. When Adam sinned, God cursed the land. He did not curse Adam. He did not curse Adam. He cursed the land and he said that you, you will toil the land with your sweat. You will toil the land because the land will no longer produce the fruit that it used to. Now it will produce thorns and thistles. So he said that, well, you will till the land. You used to depend on me, said God. Well, now you have two. And just imagine, friends, that the land is parched. The land is dry. And yet here comes the Lord Jesus Christ now. He, he is leading us into a green uh, pasture. Friends, if this is one of the loads that you have for the year, then you should be able to take comfort in this word that it is the Lord Jesus Christ himself that will lead us into the green pasture where he will provide for us, where he will meet the needs because he said that I shall not be in one. I shall have what I need because he will provide. And then he said, he restores my soul if the Lord is my shepherd, he restores my soul. So am I burdened then? Friends, earlier we said that a times of refreshing will come when we have the Lord. Amen. He restores my soul. He guides me in path of righteousness for his name's sake. So it is for his sake. If the Lord will indeed bless us, friends, it is for his sake. That's why when we are sick, claim your healing. Let your body be refreshed. Let your body be restored. Claim your healing because it is for his name's sake. Amen. It is his name that will be glorified. See what happened to this layman? When he was healed, it was his name that was glorified. It was not Peter. It was not John. It is the Lord that was glorified. So, we have to go back always to those words that we may be encouraged to walk faithfully before him. Nothing, friends, nothing he will deny from us if we walk faithfully before him. That's why, again, when we go back to that verse, he said, 
Repent then and turn to God. A lot of people, they repent, but they don't turn to God. It's an end. Repent and turn to God. A lot of people feel sorry about their, about their sin, about what they have done. They feel sorry. They will cry. They are remorseful for what they have done. But they have not turned to God. See, if you are only remorseful, you are only sorry for what you have done because you were put to shame, because now you are suffering, well, that is what we call a worldly sorrow that will bring forth death. A godly sorrow brings forth life, brings forth true repentance. Because if you are only sorry because you were put to shame, Friends, that is not repentance. Repentance is you feel sorry for yourself, and yet more than yourself, you feel sorry that you have offended God, and that you turn back to God. That is repentance that brings forth life. Turn to God, and he can restore. He said that we, we are told that he is the restorer of our soul. So this year, 2016, Expect much, friends, expect much. But it starts with repentance. What have we done in 2015? Forget those things. That was the message last uh, New Year's Eve. Forget the past. It's trained towards what is ahead. Because the past should not hinder you from achieving much in the future. But a lot of us are being dragged by the past. We are being uh, slowed down by the past because we always go back to the past. So forget the past. It's trained towards what is ahead. Then we can walk faithfully. We are steadfast in our faith. We are un- immo- immovable in our faith. Then much blessings will come our way. And so we get to repent and turn to God. So that, sins, so that your sins may be wiped out. Friends, if we repent, if this is a godly sorrow that leads to repentance, the sins will be wiped out. When it's wiped out, you don't see it. That's why the Lord said that as far as the east is from the west, so far he had forgiven our transgressions. And what he had forgiven, he remembers no more. That's the reason why the Apostle Paul was saying that there is no more condemnation that are in, to, to, to them that are in Christ Jesus. No more condemnation to them that are in Christ Jesus. Why? Because God had forgiven. And so let's continue, friends, uh, to, to walk with the Lord, being refreshed. He said that, that your sins may be wiped out, the times of refreshing may come uh, from the Lord. You know, wiping out of uh, transgressions, it's always go back, good to go back to Psalm 51, where David committed a grievous sins. And yet, here was David pleading before God for mercy. That's why he said, Have mercy on me, O God. According to your unfailing love, according to your great compassion, blot out my transgressions. And then verse 2, wash away all my iniquity and cleanse me from my sins. This is what the Lord will do. This is what the Lord will do. Only if we ask for mercy. That's why we got to go to God and ask for mercy. Let's not just assume, friends, always that God is loving and that he will forgive us. No. It's always good to assume that God is loving, but God is also just. It is his justice that demands us to come seeking, pleading for mercy. You know why? Because every, everything that we do, it has a consequence. It has a consequence. 
Because if we sow something, we also reap something. There is a consequence that is the justice of God. And because of the justice of God, we should always plead for mercy. So always assume, friends, that God is loving. He is a merciful God. That when we come to him and ask for forgiveness, then he will come. And just as David had asked, blot out my transgressions, then he will blot out our transgressions. Wash away all my iniquities and cleanse me from my sins. Then we can be as white as snow. So friends, we can be refreshed. What, is, what do you mean by refreshed? Refresh is having, giving, uh, given a new strength. Re-energize, new energy. Oh, what else? Reinvigorate, renew, re-strengthen. What else? Forgiven, healed, pardoned. Those are words that we can we use, friends, to, to refer to re- refreshing. A time of refreshing. There will come a time, there will come a time when true refreshing will, will come. And that's when we get to heaven. But just like our prayers, friends, thy will be done here on earth as it is in heaven. So we can experience a time of refreshing here. So think about yourself now. What's What's in store for you in 2016? What do you want from the Lord 2016? What are you expecting? We, we said earlier that be expectant. Friends, if you are not expectant, don't even expect to, to receive a blessing from the Lord. But when we are expectant, then he will give what we ask of him. Amen. Amen. A times of refreshing where we have a watering place. It's so good for these uh, animals to have a watering place, thirsty, and yet somebody will lead them to that watering place and they are refreshed. And that's what Psalm 42 is talking about. When David said that as the deer pants for water, See, the deer is panting for water. They are also thirsty. In a dry and weary land, these animals are also thirsty. And they pants for water. And, and the psalmist was looking at them and just imagine the animals just, just taking as much water as they could and being refreshed and they go back again to, to graze in a land that is hot, they need to be refreshed. So I pray, friends, that we find a place, a watering place. And the Lord had given us this spiritual family as a watering place where we can come with the heaviness of our soul. Just come, reflect on the Lord. We come here not to meet people. No, 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 no. That should be not the priority of your, of, your, of your life. Going to church to meet people. You go to church to meet God. Meet with God in the church. Unload your burden. You come early, you sit there, stay in the presence of God. Unload your burden. Don't come here and chat here and chat over there. No. You will not accomplish anything. In fact, you can get hurt. The more words the more offenses that can, that can happen. That's why the Bible was saying that in the multitude of, of words, sin is not lacking. And so why don't you just stay still, come early, stay there, and focus your eyes on the Lord and say, God, I'm sorry for what I have done. May I have a time of refreshing. May this be a time of repentance for me. Amen.
So come to God. So regardless of who the people around you, don't be distracted. So what is the best time for you to come? A time of refreshing. See, every morning I'm here. How I wish that one of you would come and knock the door. Pastor, can I just come in and just be in the sanctuary and just be by myself? At just a time of reflection, a time of repentance. Amen. Well, there is just all these years, friends, there is just one brother that would come. Only one. Among so many of you, only one would come. All these years, he would come and would sit there that side and would just be reading his Bible, reflecting. Sometimes he would walk around here just like me and would walk around, just walk around here. And after that, he would go. A time of refreshing. And he is refreshed. And I could see, friends, that I, things change. Things change. So, again, look for the time. Spend a time. A time where God can refresh you. Year 2016, uh, the burden will be, how much can I gather? It's that where will I gather? Just how much? So, again, we need the strength even to gather. So why don't we spend time with the Lord, being refreshed and be like David? Lord, Blot out my transgression. And in verse 3, he said, For I know my transgressions and my sin is always before me. A lot of people cannot move forward. They cannot just move forward. You know why? Because of their transgressions. He said that, For I know my transgressions and my sins, they are always before me. Against you, you only have I sinned and done what is evil in your sight, so that you are proved right when you speak and justified when you judge. So he was saying here that God, you were right in judging me. You were right. I don't blame you, God, but a lot of people, they blame God. They blame everybody else except themselves. But do you know, friends, that number one enemy is ourselves? Our number one enemy is ourselves. And yet we focus so much on other people. We blame people for every failure that we have. But looking back and just being true to ourselves, it is us that failed, not God. God is faithful. Amen? Amen. And so let us be refreshed today. Let us be refreshed. The times of refreshing might truly come. And so it requires repentance. Let us repent of our sins. We want this year to be very, very good for us. Well, to those that are in, the, in, in, uh, in business, it will be good for you. To those that are working, it will be good for you. Just to the plain believers, it will be good for us. Only if we acknowledge our sins. Let's stand up. Let's pray.